Hi guys, Harry Sunday here, letting you know that there's a apparel company that supports the game that you love. It's called There Is Only One Football.com, guys. They've got all sorts of stuff from caps, t shirts, water bottles, all sorts of accessories, even for your mobile phone. All that sporting stuff you can wear anywhere you want to wear it, guys. That's right. And don't forget the website it's on There Is Only One Football.com. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, guys, the football is tonight live from right now from Roxburgh Park, Australia. We're around the world tonight. Thank you, guys. Hup, hup. Feel it, guys. Check it out. Hup, hup. Check it out. Hup, feel it. Check it out right now, people. Hup, 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 hup. This one for you. Hup. Check it out. Hup. The cup of life. This is the one. Now is the time. Don't ever stop. We shouldn't know, gotta be strong We shouldn't know, right from the top And when you feel the heat, the world is at your feet Kenny, no one can hold you back if you really want to call us I feel it in your soul, you want the cup of life, Tony? Angelo, do you really want it? Do you really want it? Tell me right now, people! Here we go! Here we go! Ali, Ali, Ali! Good, we are the people, we are the passion, we are the history, we are bloody well history tonight, guys. That's the thing that's going on, guys. It's our way, the highway, gentlemen, it's our way, the highway, of course, tonight, guys. We got a massive show after last week's debacle on me doing my production work tonight. We are correct. We have so. Can I hear you, Carlos? You say test one, two? Yeah, what was that? You can't hear me. Can you test one, two? Test one, two. Yeah, one, two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, got single guys tonight. Thank you guys for joining me tonight, guys. Carlos Bielli, the Lone Ranger from, from, of course, New South Wales. Mr. Kenny, great Scottish Kenny Wilson. Of course, Mr. Tony Goodwin. That's right, for the soccer down, of course, all the way from Naples, Italy. We've got, uh, guess who, guys? All the way from Italy, the former CEO of Adelaide United, guys. Mr. Angelo Pinker, boys, welcome. <laughs> oh, my God, today. Today's weather, boys. Uh, Carlos, yes, thank you very much for your... Uh, Maharaja <laughs> stuff, your Maharaja stuff, of course. You're going to India? Or is that, no, is that where I, you're going to India? You're going to India? I That's what it sounds like. The Messiah. Messiah? Yeah. Please, no, give me that Messiah. Oh, do you know what they did to him last time? They put him on the cross. I don't want to go there, please, thanks. Oh, boy. The thing is, guys, tonight we've got a massive issue, a lot of things tonight. I cannot believe what's going on. We are going to go to jail. We're all going to jail, guys, at Amy Park. We are in jail. It's one big jail at Amy Park tonight, guys. A massive jail at Amy Park. We are talking, and Angela, oh, this is going to be up your alley, I tell you right now, about this jail. The whole of Amy Park's going to become a jail, guys, because 
Facial recognition. <laughs> is this for real? Honestly, I'm going to start with Angelo because you know Angelo. You go to the games at Napoli. You see the games there. Do they have facial recognition? Unbelievable. Tell me about this. Absolutely. They do? I mean, um, right, now, right now they've got... Um, They've got the fidelity card. If you can't, if you have the fidelity card, which costs thirty-one euros, and you've got three years, the card is uh, valued for three years, right? Yeah. And if you haven't got the fidelity card, you can't get into the stadium, even if you've got a ticket. So you so it's like there's a yeah, identification plus everywhere. Oh my God, that's it. Now, Carlos, you being a, a a law officer of this, the King King's Council, we'll say the King's Council now. How do you feel as a lawman to basically think that uh, the, could this be as a, um, of course, the Melbourne Victory fans are absolutely upset. They're all upset. They're saying that they, they will boycott the games. Uh, well, that's what's going to happen. Go on. Huh? Look, uh, if you have that nothing wrong, you have nothing to fear. So let's take a chill pill and let's, it's, let's take, see the face value. Yes. If you have that, nothing wrong, you have nothing to fear. We need to weed out the idiots that have caused mayhem and bring the game to disrepute. And the only way to do it is with special recognition because the ground staff cannot be checking through an iPad photographs of the troublemakers. If you have nothing to fear, just go to the game and enjoy the game. And, and the troublemakers will be... Will, Taken out. Well, I tell you what, now, 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 Kenny, you come from Scotland all those years ago. You, you went to the games at Hampton Park and watched Rangers. I mean, you, you got to tell me what were those days like with the hooligans? Because you saw a lot of them over there. Is that right? I mean, when I was when I was young, I used to get lifted over the uh, the turnstiles. There was they were only checking. You know, if they announced, you know, eighty thousand was probably ninety five in there because all the all the young kids get lifted over the turnstiles and and going for free, but. Oh look! I think we're in a we're in a new world order. So it's Whoa. and how do we how do we weed out what Carlos says? We've got to weed out these absolute moronic uh, human beings. I know <laughs> a I very know. small a very small uh, portion of majority of the club. But, yes, but, but but unfortunately, the the media, uh, not not the football media, but the the other sports media, jump on it immediately when when uh, something stupid happens. Oh, you know, um, so we've, you know, we, we've definitely, we'll never get rid of it all, but, you know, what, what do you, what do you do? What you do know? you do? And, 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 and actually Tony knows exactly what happened last year. Was it this year uh, when the uh, Melbourne victory crowd were coming over and they said, no, uh, what did they say? We're going to have to check them all out or something. And you were there. And apparently the, the, <laughs> the grand manager got the sack. Is that right? Yeah, the guy that runs the um, association that runs um, the stadium, yes. uh, he was uh, dismissed, I think, last week. Um, that was a debacle. Uh, the whole thing was a debacle. It was an embarrassment. But um, in the great Victoria of Danistan, yes, I uh, guess that... Uh, He's gone. Yeah, We're free. We're I, free. No, I sort of agree, I guess, in principle, if you can wait this scum out. So it doesn't attend and ruin it for everybody. It's literally like point zero zero one percent is making it impossible for the poor victory fans. So uh, my only concern, obviously, is if it's used for meeting means other than what is specifically for. So well, we'll see. I guess watch this space. But if it yes, does yes. what it's designed to do and it weeds that scum out, then it makes it better because uh, you know big crowds from Victory Sydney and Western Sydney and stuff like that. You know, um, exactly. Their principle of the game success. Let me just uh, bring Angelo again into this. Let me just say this, right? The thing is, if they're going to put facial recognition, that means that those guys in the past who have done something will be straight away, they'll be filmed, they'll be, they'll be told, sold to stay there uh, with security and everything. And the thing about this is we don't even know how many of these guys still get in. We don't know. So this facial recognition, and of course, Angelo, how does this system work in Italy? How does it work? We're talking every ground here. Is that right? Every ground? You've been to the grounds. Do you have to show a certain, like you said, a pass or something? Is that right? Absolutely. Well, it's a card. It's like a plastic card yep. where you get your, your photo at the back of the card, and that is your ID to get into, uh, to get into any stadium. Yep. I, 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 did the, I had to do the same thing in England. You know, I went to a game there, one of the Champions League games. So... It's not if I think it's a fantastic idea. Trust me on this one. 
Because if they, our game is going to grow in Australia, right, it needs to grow with this sort of thing. The identification is important because you know what happened in Melbourne Victory, yep. right? And, and nobody knew those people. I mean, some of the some of the fans were actually thinking that they were AFL, oh, AFL fans trying to do damage to the game. So you just don't know. And then there's a court case. I think with ID, you can't go wrong. So, Carlos, so that's, a better idea. that's a better idea, I reckon. Yeah, because you know, so, at least then they get fetched before they get their pass. But what I what I can understand is that those guys who caused the trouble there last year were actually banned. They were banned, and they got in. I mean, they didn't get the message saying that, okay, we can't go anymore. Who gives us stuff? We're going to turn up. They turned up in black T-shirts, no nothing. They turned up in glasses. They turned up in hats. And then they jumped on the field, packing selfies of themselves and everything. What is this crap? I mean, Carlos, how, how would you expect them to turn up there at the turnstiles at Amy Park? And do you think that the security would hold them there? Look, um, the, uh, look the reason that the they might have snapped in is because we didn't have facial recognition. It's really hard when you've got a crowd of two or 3,000 people coming. And football fans seems to come very late to our games. You know, they come in in, a big, in big numbers 10, 15 minutes before kickoff. That's what I have seen mm-hmm. in most ga- games. Look, I kind of – look, fa- so therefore facial recognition has to come in to make life easier for those people who, one, are casuals. Number two, they probably have minimal training what to do or not to do. So let's give everyone all the tools to weed out the troublemakers. And it's it, it's a, besides the facial recognition, it, you know, the judicial system need to come down hard on these idiots, and it is coming down because you touch a referee mm-hmm. and you... Ooh. Got twelve months suspension, then you go through the court. So, besides the facial recognition, everyone has to work together for the benefit of the game. And the true fans should dob in those people causing mayhem, throwing yeah. flares, throwing mm. bottles. You know, true fans do not want to have the game ruined or have the game played behind closed doors. So, dob them in. Exactly. Now, the, the thing about this is, too, what you just mentioned, I was going to mention that flares. They cannot control, they cannot search people in their underwear. They can't do this. And this is what upsets me, Kenny. I mean, you were there, in, of course, in Scotland. Did they, at that time, you was a kid, were they still, were they bringing flares at the time? Were they doing all this stuff? I mean, flares are, flares are uh, South American, Spanish, uh, maybe a little bit in Italy. Um, in the UK, you don't you don't get flare, flares in the UK. I, I, I don't... Remember any players getting thrown, and in, in, I don't see any in the Premier League getting thrown. And I don't see any in the Scottish Premier League. Um, I mean, predominantly South America, you know, Colombia, Argentina, um, a little bit uh, in, in Italy, a little bit certainly in Spain, a little bit. I, I, I'm a, I, yeah, I'm very against throwing players, um, specifically when you've got you know young families at games, you know, and, and they say, oh, but it creates an atmosphere. Yeah, that's okay if, as long as one of them. Doesn't land on one of your one of your kids' heads, oh, man. you know. I mean, really, you know. It's it, it, for me. There's no place for it, you know. I mean, have a look at, uh, you know, the singing and the passion can be there without lighting flares and throwing them on the pitch. I mean, I've seen, in actual fact, um, last year at, at my local comp, um, at the grand final day at, at Coma Park, some idiot threw a flare onto the astroturf. Ooh, it bumped the astroturf. And it caused thirty thousand dollars worth of damage. Oh my god! So you know, I mean, it's not just a you know, uh, look, it's part of the passion. It's part of well, really, is it? You know, it, I mean, we can't, we don't have guy fox thing anymore. We can't settle fireworks. We can't do uh, that anymore. Well, and let, control the environment. let me tell you what happened one day to the FFA Cup about the FFA Cup match. Three years ago to four years ago, I was actually, and everybody knows this, if you were if you were at the South Melbourne game at Altona, Altona Magic at the ground down there, they had all the, I'm not going to go into the racial stuff, but down there, there were a certain ethnicity there, whatever. But you know, they were screaming about, I'm not going to say it, sorry. But you know what? I'm playing the drums. I'm playing the drums here, guys. I'm next to the president of South Melbourne, or as I'm playing the drums. Guess what happened? A bloody, <laughs> they threw it. They threw a flare, just missed me, and it hit a woman. 
My God, man. They're, they're things you don't hear at these local games. They just missed me to hit a woman, mate. They were on. They were they, The lights came off on the ground. They were just about to write and everything. There's nobody there, no security. FFA Cup but, but, but between ethnic type of uh, country, uh, ethnic type clubs and whatever. I'm not going to mention names. But let me tell you, it just missed me and it hit a bloody woman. That was and, disgusting. And fairness, and fairness, mate, I've heard you play the drums. So possibly he was probably right throwing a Thanks, mate. Okay, no, okay, no, no. Yeah, well, I was, I was, pl- I was playing the, uh, I was playing the, in- you know, those Indian ones. This one, woo, 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 woo. the Indian stuff. The Indian no, stuff. I think you should, play, you should be playing tragedy. Oh, mate, really? oh, I'm tragedy. <laughs> the game is a tragedy for Roger Sleeman. If you're out there, thank you. For- I can't say, I can't say it anymore. That's enough. But let me tell you guys. I've copped it. I nearly copped it. I've seen things at the NPL games. I tell you what, we need, when you say security, you need security everywhere. Facial recognition everywhere. Whether it's going to cost them all a lot of money, I don't know. But Amy Parker putting this through and doing it. So let's just see what happens in the future. And and I'd like to actually speak to Jamie Rebella about this because he's the, the, uh, one of the owners, of course, part owners of uh, Melbourne Victory. And I'll be speaking to him in a couple of days to bring him on next week and talk about this. I'm sure he's not going to be happy, but... They want to weed out these guys. That's the only. Uh, that's the only way to do it. That's the thing. But I tell you what, guys. Um, the thing about this is, I want to go to a. Uh, last week we spoke about this, and we did. We didn't finish this. But I tell you what, I have the. Uh, I have the documents here. Well, let's say a document here, and this is another scoop for you guys tonight. Of, of course, about the um, uh, about the NSL two. I call it NSL two. Exactly what I'm saying right now. And what I did find here. <coughs> I found the club, the final listing to the clubs. Now, some of these clubs I think have pulled out, and we're going to mention these guys in a, in a few moments, guys. So I've got just got it here right now. Okay, I'm back again. National tier update as per last week, okay? We're going to go back to this club. Arpia Leichhardt. Arpia Leichhardt. Avondale FC. Hang on for a sec. Avondale FC do not have a stadium. They've got a, a little ground with no stadium. I, I, they may have some money, but I don't think they will be able to get in. At the, I think this, this is not really a club that you've got to you, – other than they hire a stadium to cost them, cost them more. Of course, Brisbane United merger. To Kenny, that's your favourite. The Brisbane United merger yep. is in. There it is. Between, of course, we're talking about – we spoke to Roby Cram a few weeks ago, and we spoke about the um, – of course, we spoke about him with uh, Virginia United – uh, Mel, uh, Brisbane Strikers, and of course you've got uh, Win and Wolves. Brisbane Lions. Br- no, not even Brisbane Lions. Brisbane Strikers. No Brisbane Lions are involved in this. They've not put in at all. They've not. I can't believe they didn't put in. So the uh, the only club, the only club from Brisbane is that club. A, a, a three game, a three team merger. And let me just say before I go to other teams. Now, of course, this is a bit funny, isn't it? Because I think they they're going to be in. And didn't they hire someone really high up the other day? You know. Uh, Frank Farina, I mean, uh, of course, uh, Angela, you know, uh, mate, that guy's been lost to the game now. He's been lost to the game. And it is, it's disgusting not to have him back. But now these guys have brought him back to the club that he won a, a final, 1997 final in a cell for the packed pack ground at Lang Park when I was there, Angelo. Yeah, no, look, Frank Farina, I think I applaud Brisbane Strikers and I think they, they look pretty well on their way. They've done everything right. They've, they've crossed all the I's and P's and, you know, the criterions that have been put out by, by FA. And I think that that's going to be a very solid uh, club. You know, having a merger with three, you know, three clubs, making them a whole lot stronger. And then someone like Frank Farina, mm-hmm. who's been around and player as a coach and, uh, you know, he, he's a well-respected man. I think, um, I think the Brisbane Strikers will be a really, really good uh, entity coming into the league and, you know, like, and obviously we know about the fact that you need to be a long-standing, you know, you need to have long-term viability. The stadium, you spoke about the stadiums, Harry. A lot of these clubs don't have the stadia. No, they don't. Don't, don't, don't actually complete the, yeah, don't. They, don't, they don't actually, uh, they, well, they don't actually abide by the, adhere to the criteria. So mm. I think that if four clubs, three or four clubs are going to come from Sydney, yes. they'll, have to, they'll have to play at the same venue. You know, obviously, there, there are, uh, you know, like uh, you've got the agility uh, agility of the stadium. You know, you need to have uh, all sorts of regulations in place to be in the competition. And, uh, yeah, I, I say that if, if four, four teams come from Sydney, which I think they will, then they need, to, they need to play at a stadium where it's completely safe. You spoke about flares, but then there's other things, you know. You need to have bathrooms and all those uh, sorts of things, you know, for women and kids and all that sort of thing. And, of course, uh, there, there, is, there is about 10 criterions. I, I hope that a lot of those um, 
Uh, you call them NSL2. I, I don't think it's going to be called NSL2. And we, we have Peter Falopoulos from there. And Harry, oh, no, please. I, you know, I, respect, Mate, I, I love your work and all that sort of thing, but I, I don't think it will be. Because, I'm going to be because hot. Every, I'm going to be holding your I, banner. I'm, this, I'm going to put the banner up, mate. I don't care what they say. They'll be clapping their hands. Everybody be doing it. I'll be going around the bloody ground, mate, getting donations. That's all I'll be doing. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm like the psycho psycho here. Man. You know how it works. Jesus. Honestly. Okay. okay. But you've got some very good points. We all know that. Know that. You, you've got the passion. Let me tell you, some of the criteria of these clubs definitely will be to Australianise their brands. It'll be a little bit of history. Obviously, you can't just throw away the history. No. The history needs to be there. Just like what we did, you know, like in Adelaide and Perth and Nick Tana. Yes. You know what I mean? But you need to Australianise the brand. Maybe make it, if the team comes from Victoria, have a little bit of Victorian flavour. Sydney, a little bit of Sydney flavour. But you need to appeal. You need to appeal. The most yeah. important thing is my marketing hat on. You need to appeal to the mass market. You just can't have your two, 3,000 Greek fans, two, 3,000... Croatian fans, yes. two, three thousand Serbian fans, and so on. You need to Australianise the band. There's no two ways about it. People might get offended by this, but if you're going to be in a competition and you want long-term viability, you need to have the kids and you need to really appeal to the mass uh, community. Exactly. Now, Carlos, I'm going to bring you into this because you're a New South Wales boy yourself, and I'm sure, Kenny, between you two, I want to talk about these clubs. I don't understand this at all. How could you put clubs like this um, Gung, Gunda guy, no, Gunga, 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 I can't speak about Canberra, Croatia, and Gungahlin, but I, what I have to say that I feel like I will play at Laika Oval yep. because Lumber Park, uh, you know, they need a bigger ground. Yes. Olympic will play at Belmore. Both grounds, Laika Oval and Belmore, Belmore Oval, need major upgrades. So hopefully the National Second Division kickstarts the upgrade of like an oval, which is showing his age, we bathrooms are. are not there, and Belmore is also showing his age. So hopefully, if Apialaika is chosen and Belmore, the state government with assistance, the local councils with assistance of the state government and federal money will upgrade those grounds for the benefit of everyone because they are showing both grounds are just showing their ages and they're not, mm. you know, the, the bathrooms looks really old, they're, they're, they're okay, but hopefully if second division comes along, there's an improvement to both grounds. Exactly. Now, now Kenny, I'm going to bring you in for, for, the, for, the, for these two clubs. Oh, boy. I'm going to bring you this. The two Italian clubs of Sydney, of course, you know who they are, don't you? You know who they yeah. are. That's going to be a massive derby when they get together. They'll be smashing each other for sure. You're talking about uh, Marconi Stallions and, of course, uh, what Carlos said about um, Arpia Leica. Those two clubs, their grounds. We know that Marconi is pristine. The Palace, as they used to call it, Kenny. Yep. Well, look, of all the clubs that, that I've sort of put their hand up for this, Marconi is the best fitted to move forward in the competition. It's got everything, social club, restaurants, oh, yes. great facilities. Um, and, and if you had a choice of all these clubs, you would you'd certainly pick Marconi Stadium way above anyone else. But but we're, we're anticipating that these crowds are going to gonna grow uh, exponentially, dramatically. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm still trying in my head around you know, and, and we laugh about calling it NSL too, but literally 90% of these teams that are going into this uh, alleged new competition are all old NSL teams. That's Preston, in Mac Macedonia, wow. Mer uh, South Melbourne, uh, uh, Olympic, Marconi, Apia. You know, so when you look at the, the substance of it, it really is revisiting the NSL and, and, and what Angelo was saying is trying trying to obviously Australianize a little bit. Don't lose your 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 sort of identity. 
Well, that's what the A League tried to do with a little bit of success with maybe probably Sydney FC. I don't accept that that uh, uh, that some of the clubs are no uh, ethnic. Like for me, the Wanderers are a Croatian club. Mm-hmm. I've, I've yes. always believed that, and, I, and I, you know, when I look at the support base, the players, the you know, it's a Croatian supported club, rank club, uh, predominantly. You know, coaching and and uh, and you know, I, I, it's a difficult call. I mean, what what, what we what we might get is supporters going from the A League to the new whatever we want to call it because they'll be running yeah, different perfect. seasons, right? Exactly. So, so that's the only, uh, and that's and that's what I think FA FA are banking on that on on the the ending of end of September October of this potential new league mm. October mid October the A League would start mm-hmm. and you would get a a, a switch back. Exactly. <laughs> so you get Sydney FC fans that are supporting Marconi or vice versa Apia, <laughs> but it's exactly. it, it's a uh, look. I think I, I, I think in reality we've spoken about it many times. I think the A League is probably just running out of gas this season. To mm. be perfectly, you know, we've now got three or four teams. We mentioned Brisbane Strikers. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to run a team in the A League and a team in the new comp. Uh, and, oh and no, the, no, no, Brisbane, Brisbane. Are you talking about Brisbane, Brisbane Raw, Brisbane Raw completely well, different? Well, well, technically it's the same, isn't it? No, the they're Strikers not the same. Raw, the raw, the raw and strikers are two different entities, Kenny. They're both two yeah. different entities. They are both different entities. And I'll tell you about Brisbane Lions at, right now. Let me tell you how much money they made during the Women's World Cup. As I did my, uh, I did my, uh, I did my um, um, interview there with the uh, one of the players and, and the general manager. He took me after and I said, "My God, look at these facilities." They've got the best facilities, one of the best facilities in Australia, and they and we're talking about a massive stand. They've got the brand new change room, gyms, everything. They had it there for the the Nigerian girls who played there. Yeah. And I walked in, I said, "My God, what is this? This is like a, a European facility." And they didn't put their money in. They didn't put their money with their mouths are. That's yeah, ridiculous. Maybe, maybe maybe they're the smart ones. You know, the Dutch, the Dutch, the Dutch, Dutch club, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. And, and always have been, and. Uh, yeah, I think that you mean Rockdale. I don't think Rockdale. No, they're uh, out. They're out. They, they're out. They, they've probably gone uh, five million dollars. They're out. Uh, and Fraser Park, think. Fraser Park gone too. They're out of there. Yeah, yeah. I, th- mm-hmm. I think yeah. I think common sense prevails. We spoke, spoke of it before. I mean, Apia still got Tony Rashidi there. Yes, who, yes. You know, without Tony, would there be an Apia? I don't. And today, I don't. I don't think there would be. Um. So I mean, there's lots of good people there. Don't get me wrong, but but you know. It's a it's it's a club that he's kept kept going through yeah. obviously you know a lot of yeah. personal finance etc. Yeah, yeah. But but you know Olympic I look at you know my club you know Olympic yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know Laurie's doing a great job there. But yes, yes. you know I, I I look and I and I and I look and you, you get derby games there and still people yes, don't come. Out. That's the thing. And, and I'm just not going. I'm not understanding how. That's going to change by just changing the non diploma of the, uh, of the competition. Let me tell you something before I bring Tony on for the next two clubs is that last week when Brisbane Raw, Raw, Raw played at uh, Melbourne Knights, 5,000 people. 5,000. Thousand people turned up. I spoke to someone about this. He could not believe it. I said, "Here you go. Check out the films. I send it to you and all this." Five, mate. They've had a gut full of the MPL. They don't want to be in the MPL. They want nothing to do with the MPL. That has just about broken the clubs. Is it? Nobody goes. Nobody goes. It is a dead competition. What do they get paid in Melbourne when they win a? They spend two or two what through three two hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars on players. And what do they get back at the end of the year? A little medal trophy and twenty thousand dollars. Does that pay anything? That's ridiculous. That's the thing. about Right, we've got we've got we've got an issue mate uh from the very top uh, it is I an mean, issue. Okay, we, we, we can we can talk about the matildas being a, being a best brand at the moment yes yes but pound for pound it's the Socceroos moving forward yes will always be a freight train ban exactly yeah I we wonder... can only get four million dollars a year sponsorship for that i know that. four million with, with subway that's uh that's that's where the where the bar starts Four million mm. for our soccer I know, I know. That's ridiculous. Right? But that's and then it's mean. then it's downward from there, right? I get you. So you know the reality is no TV. I mean, uh, Carlos knows better than me. But the, the the TV company that did the MPL, they've gone belly up. They're gone. <laughs> we know true. Channel Ten and, and uh, Paramount are you know on very shaky ground. Yep, yep. You know um, how many clubs in in the the current uh, 
National League don't have owners or are, are, are struggling for funds. Yes. It's got to crisis point. Yep, yep, so it is. I think this this will be the, very much the telling. I mean, later on, I mean, I've got a, I, I've got an idea of what I think might happen in the next twenty four months. I'll be interested to see what Tony thinks about it because exactly. For that. But what, yeah, we can talk about that after. Yeah, that's it. And, and what I want to say, Tony, right now is these two next clubs are Melbourne clubs, and I guarantee you, you've gone to to Hindmarsh Stadium and watched them in the past. You're talking about in Melbourne Knights and Preston Lions. My God, man! What I tell you about Preston Lions is they are ready, set, go. You should see their, their facilities. They've got a, another stand being built on the other side. There's plenty of parking out there. Been there. 5,000 people. Three to 5,000 people a game. I have never seen the atmosphere like this in my life. And when I walk, this is the NSL. I'm back in the NSL. My God, man. And when they played, they played Melbourne, the Melbourne City uh, team. That they, they played the Melbourne City uh, team as well there. Of course, the uh, development team. My God, man. 5,000 people. Are they for real? Tony. You know, Melbourne Knights and, of course, Melbourne Knights, 5,000 people last week at Brisbane Raw. You saw it. Tell me. Oh, Melbourne, Melbourne Knights have got some magnificent support, and I oh, think yes. if they get back in the first game, I just think you'll see those crowd numbers go up. There'll be a lot yes. of inquisitive people from other clubs that'll want to go as well. Um, South Melbourne, obviously, I think they'll draw some massive crowds, um, which is good for the game. I mean, it, it's probably good if we can get those sort of crowds in what we deem as our winter and then hop into the A-League. I mean, hopefully there's a – I mean, it's a dream for us sort of thing because it's football all year round then. Um, so I, I can't wait for that part of it. It's just a shame that Adelaide City and West yeah. Adelaide haven't got a presence there, you no, know, no, going no, way back. It would have been all. awesome because no. Adelaide's always been a heartland of uh, football in Australia uh, with players as well. So, And I'm not sure what's happening with the Football SA bit either. I haven't heard no, much no. on that lately. They've got nothing. They're, they've got no team in South Australia. And nothing. That is that is terrible. I mean, of course, that uh, South Australian NPL, I mean, I don't know, uh, NPL at South Australia, what happened to that? What happened to them? That's ridiculous. No Adelaide City, no West Adelaide. I mean, uh, what can we do? Uh, hopefully they can get bring someone up in the next few years when this starts. The next one I'm going to tell you here is, uh, of course, uh, <laughs> I'll tell all of you right now, I'll say Carlos first. Apparently, South Hobart are back in. South Hobart are back in. Man, that'd be fantastic to have a team in, uh, of course, in Tasmania. And of course, yeah, we're talking we're, here, South Melbourne, South Melbourne Hellas. We need, if we're going to help, if we're going to expand the game and promote the game and grow the game, we need to have a team in Tasmania. It's true. Uh, to give those kids a pathway. So South Hobart, you know, if they meet the criteria, they're one of the oldest clubs in Tasmania. Uh, they're still operating. They're probably going to range us in New South Wales, the oldest club still operating, and they deserve to be there. Yep. And uh, they have Ken Norton, who we spoke to. We did speak to him a few months ago. He is a world credential coach. They have an average age of 21, 22 in first grade. So they deserve to be there. And it, it could only be a boost to mm. Tasmanian football. And I'm mm. hoping that if the Tasmanian government spends a crap lot of money on this new AFL team, that that, that ground gets to be shared. It has to be shared. They, they won't make any money. They won't make any money from that. Because, you know, one of the conditions of a Tasmanian team coming into the AFL was to have a brand new stadium of $700 million for maybe eight <laughs> games a season, 10 games. There's a lot of a lot of people saying we could spend better the seven hundred million dollars in many in many other ways yes. to improve people's lifestyles and everything else. So I'm hoping that if they build the stadium that is not for the exclusive use of AFL, because we're all taxpayers, where we're football people, rugby union, AFL, at the end of the day, all Tasmanians will contribute to that. Maybe white elephant. I'm not sure. <coughs> exactly. Now, I want to bring Angela on this because these are the clubs that I've, I'm sure that these are the clubs that uh, Adelaide United played. Of course, played these. Uh, hang on, before we get to there, I've got a, I've got a team here saying to myself, "Is this for real, gentlemen? Is this for real?" And everyone listening out there, to me, this would have to be an absolute. Uh, what would you call this? A bolter. What would they say? Uh, the dark, uh, the dark part of this is basically saying, will this team ever make this? I mean, they're in the final lot of teams here. 
Sunshine Coast. I mean, I've, I've been to the Sunshine Coast. I've lived up there. I've, I've seen everything there. There's nothing there. Where did this team come from? Have they got money up there? Uh, I mean, who do I speak to about this? I know about it because I'm saying to myself, well, this is the team that's got no, no stadium. There's no stadium up there. How are they going to try and get supporters? And that's a rugby league city. The Sunshine Coast is rugby league full on. Kenny, I mean, this is where you think the teams are competing with rugby league teams in Sydney as well and all these clubs together. I mean, how do you how do you think a, in a rugby league uh, town like, uh, of course, uh, Sunshine Coast, that that's, doesn't make sense to me. Well, mate, mate there, is, there is a lot of places up there, to be honest, that, that, that's got good stalker bases, yeah. Malula Bar yeah. and places like that. Yes. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me that they, they would get, be able to get a boutique team going up there. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, I mean, I know I go up there. You what know, I, I used to go up there every October, and you know they have they have a big big tournament there every every yeah, year. Yeah. Um, so and the, the Sunshine Coast, you know, Sunshine Plaza, which is a big Lee shopping centre. Yes, it's one of the biggest, I've worked it's one there. of the biggest in Australia. Um, you you would know that. I've worked. Uh, and, I've worked there. I know. Yeah, and you know, and then you're heading. You know, you you, you can keep going on to Gympie, and yes, you know, so, I've been through this. So that you you you've got a big cut. You've got a big sort of catch a market up there <clears throat> I'd imagine you know that what they're mm. trying to achieve is if they can get four or five thousand supporters it's enough to, to to get a go I'd rather see a team up there than having four or five teams in Sydney you know I, yeah. I, I, I'd yeah. like to see you know a Tasmanian team I'd like to see you know we're talking Gingalan I used to have a, I used to have a business in Gingalan oh, okay. I, I know Gingalan well the Gingalan is 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 what uh uh what uh, Carlos, I think, said last week, it, that's where all the residential growth is in Canada. Yeah, 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 it's massive. Right. It's massive. There's a couple of shopping centres there. Um, it's got huge residential growth. So I sort of understand that. Um, uh, Canberra, Croatia has always been a massive, uh, you know, it's like Sydney, Croatia. You know, it's their sister club. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so it doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. Gungalan, you know, who knows? You know, who knows? Exactly. It, 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 but it's the the five million dollars a year is the uh, I suppose it's the the chicken and the egg. That's it. Now, of course, yeah. I'm bringing you and Angelo with this one here right now, and of course, Tony, <coughs> Tony yourself and Angelo would have seen these clubs right through as a, from Adelaide United there. They would have played at Sydney Olympic. Uh, Sydney. Uh, hang on. I don't think Carlos likes Sydney United because of the past problems. Uh, they're in the last draw here as well. And of course, Wollongong Wolves. Wollongong Wolves are very famous in this uh, club, of course. Angela, you first. Yeah, no, uh, starting with Wollongong, I think, you know, Harry Michaels, our good friend, passionate, intelligent. He was, um, he did a lot of great work over there. Not just, you know, bringing over Alan Brazil, but, you know, there was a uh, uh, there was a great promotion of football around that area there. And then secondly, what Kenny was saying there, uh, the, there is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, trying to get an entity from Sunshine because um, my point is we, we don't need to be inferior anymore, be afraid where rugby league is living and, you know, uh, where any anywhere that there's other codes of football, we don't need to be inferior and, and just say, oh, look, we better not go there because... We've got the biggest, most participation of playing kids right up to the age of 14 in Australia. So it's not just about building an entity, building a team in the second tier competition. It's about promoting the game and and just uh, finding out what the demographics are. And I think Kenny covered it pretty well with Sunshine. We need to build a team there. Tasmania, as Carlos said, we need, we need a team there if we want to promote the game. FIFA always talks about it. Um, you know, like uh, uh, build, you know, like organising a World Cup in different uh, countries. Uh, we need to think about states. We need to spread, uh, you know, the word of the game <laughs> and also the career path. So Carlos mentioned that we need to have a career path uh, set up in just about every state. It's a shame that Perth Glory aren't going to come in, Adelaide aren't going to come in, but. I can tell you now, Adelaide City, they, they really haven't got, they wouldn't fill the criteria about having a stadium mm. because where, where they play, at Jeff's Cross, um, you know, like uh, it's absolutely not, not right for the second tier competition, wouldn't be right for the third tier competition. So I don't think that'd be right. But I think um, I've got to bring up the point that one of the most important things, one of the most important criteria is about membership base. Mm. We know we can see it today, Western United, 
Okay, oh, I'm boy. sorry, but that is not a success. Okay, yeah, MacArthur, no way. I'm sorry, that is not a success. And 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 you might say, well, what's the solution? The solution is that the FA you need to have a criteria and need to give them a target date. By a certain date, they need to have a certain amount of members. Okay, that's how you're going to get people to the stadium. That's how you're going to create affinity, right, with these entities that are coming in in the second tier yeah, competition. Yeah. Now, where is where is the target for Western United? They've won a, they've won a, a championship. Okay, and as I've always said, when does a club, whether it's AFL, rugby league, soccer, whatever you want to call it, a, a, a sporting organisation grow? When you win a competition, when you win the championship, you are champions. That is the best time to go to the members, best time to go to the sponsors, best time to grow in anything, fan base, junior development, whatever. And these teams, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, they've failed. I have they to. have failed. I know. I was on Carlos' show. He was telling me that some of the some of the prices behind the goals. Oh, that, mate! You know, the, the ticketing, forty five dollars and fifty dollars and sixty five dollars. I mean, who's going to go to these guys? Amy Park too. Same prices. Same prices. That's just unbelievable. Yeah, not, yeah and, and look, all of these things are, are you know because I've been through the the uh, criterions when we started Adelaide United and we had the eighteen months. Iotis and, you know, we had to do a business plan and strategies and all that sort of thing. We filled all the criterions. So may God bless Frank Lowy. I know some people like him, some don't, and he's shown all these types of politics, but all of the criterias were respected and we only had eight teams, eight teams to, uh, to adhere to all of the criterions, okay? And, and, look, he started with eight teams. He could have started with 14. Mm -hmm. He could have said, look, Australia does allow me to have, you know, 12 teams or 13, 14, but we started with eight teams. Mm -hmm. And my last point is this. I hope the FA think about it long and hard about which teams are going to come in the competition. I mean, Carlos mentioned RP Leichhardt. He mentioned they haven't got the stadium. They're not ready. And if they've got to wait for the government, a government grant to give them $10 million mm -hmm. to upgrade, that's not going to happen. It's going to take a long time. The teams that come in, gentlemen, they need to be ready right from the first day. Right from the first day, they need to be ready and, and respect and adhere to all the criterions that have been put in place for this second-tier competition. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to have teams dropping out. Let me, as, as Ken said, five million and all this sort of thing. Angelo, Who's going to have that money? Angelo and everyone here right now listening tonight, guys. Everybody's been been been, been basically uh, they're, they're bagging the set the S NSL two. That's my opinion, NSL two. <laughs> and let me just say right here, right now, to everyone. There is a second option on the table that people I found out of. A second option on the table is to have a Champions League system, to have two groups of Champions League, and you still be playing in the NPL as well. That's the other thing too. Maybe they'll be playing in the NPL as well. So this is the thing about this. If this falls off as a as a 12 or 14 team competition and they can't select a lot of teams, they will go into a Champions League system, which means that makes it more in a, in a better light. To, uh, that gives them an opportunity to stay in the NPL <coughs> and, of course, to basically get into the Champions League things, which will, the other thing will be is if they do get b much better players, they will have much stronger teams in their NPL as well. That's the other thing. So that's the thing, guys. Just remember this. There are two options on the table, a whole competition like the uh, like the old NSL or the Champions League system. That is it picked out right where's, now. Where's the, where's, the, where's, the, where's the better players coming from, Harry? Well, apparently, from what I've heard, Angelo, I think you might actually, uh, I think you might have supplied one of the clubs, uh, apparently. Is that right? Well, Arpia. a couple of the clubs, well, a couple of the clubs have, have contacted us, you know, like in preparation, but, yes. you know, I think in early stages, they're not, they're not ready, you know, yeah, like yeah. to supply some of the clubs. We're talking about Kenny, Serie C, you know, a third division of Italy, you know, players uh, yeah, yeah. coming over. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of the players <laughs> in this. I can guarantee this, I can tell you, mm. they love Australia. They love the quality of life. So it's not just about money, okay? Yeah. It's about, uh, you know, like Australia does appeal to a lot of people, you know, because of the quality of life and the cities and all that sort of thing. And, look, let me tell you, before they think about getting some of these players over, they really need to respect those criteria, Harry. Otherwise, we're going to have a failure. And then you talked about the Champions League format. If they're going to have a Champions League format, they can't have 10 teams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, mean, I know that JJ 
James Johnson has been going around saying that his um, happy medium sort of numbers to have 10 teams. If you're going to have a Champions League, you're going to have four groups of four. That's 16 teams. Yes, yes. Or you're going to have 12 teams. You can't have actually 10 teams. How are you going to do that? I, I don't know. I mean, you need to have at least 12 teams, so have three groups of four. Yep. And the top two teams are going to, you know, going to the next round. Like, that's the Champions League format. So I don't think – I think everybody's confused. Mm. <laughs> I know I am. They don't know, really, what type of competition it's going to be. Well, well I, we, think, I, I think the issue is – I think we've got smoke and mirrors. We're already – Tomorrow's the third of October. Yes. This comp's supposed to start in March. And we don't even know if, if there is a comp. We don't even know. And even if there is a comp, how does these clubs get new players or are they just going to move in with the NPL teams that they currently have? Well, what's the point of that? We just, you know, we're, try, we're trying to, what we're basically saying, no disrespect yep, yep. <coughs> to the current NPL clubs with the, with the squads of players. But if we're saying we want to make it like a national comp, then the standard of the play has got to improve. It's got to get better. It's got to be, um, you know, trying to compete with the, you know, the, 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 the alien. Now, mm. That's not going to happen. We, we obviously with the FA Cup, we know that that's not happening because, you know, the, the NPL teams have only, only really done very well against the A-League teams when they field a full team. So what we're saying is we're going to start a new comp but, you know, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's normally a duck. So if you move into these comps with the same, predominantly same squads of players, nothing changes. I mean, the quality doesn't change. What changes? You're travelling interstate. What changes? Yep. You're maybe playing in maybe bigger venues, maybe. Uh, but that's not the, the that's no the end result we're looking for. We're looking for a better competition. And everyone's yeah. saying they're not happy with the NPL, the quality of the NPL. Everyone bags it. You see, that's why they don't go. Nobody goes. That's right. But and everybody, <laughs> everybody, including, just to ask you, just very quickly. Sorry, <coughs> about in Harry, but that's right. if you're going to have a competition, everybody is asking and wanting and waiting for a competition that's going to promote two or three teams into the A League. Okay, we're forgetting about that. I mean, I know that uh, there's a cost factor, okay, but everybody around Australia, and I think FIFA, FIFA are waiting for this sort of thing to happen in Australia to add a bit more credibility, exactly. is to have a second tier competition <coughs> and to have a promotion relegation. Exactly. Yeah, promotion relegation. We can have Harry, you talked about, you talked about some of these teams continuing to playing in the NPL. If they do that, there is going to be an increase in wages. Increase, you know, the contracts are going to be larger. Oh, yes. Because, I mean, players are going to play in both competitions for the exactly. same wages. Yes, of course. I, I understand. understand. But the, the, this is where the, there's more sponsors come. I've heard from other clubs. My Preston, Preston Lions, Preston Macadania, the amount of sponsors that they've got. And the president spoke to me, Harry, no matter. He, he spoke to me a few weeks. He says, Harry, don't worry about what's going on, what you're hearing. Everything is fine. It's going ahead. And that's, it. that's what he said. Well, I can't talk to you about a lot of stuff right now. But he said, I can't say anything until it's ready to go. That's what. And he will come on the show. He will come on the show, he told me as well. So he, he said a few things to me saying that the few things are happening, I can't tell you what's going on. It's all going to go ahead. Fine. That's fine. We're just going to have to wait, guys. In October, this is the month that we know. It said it there in, in my system. In, and, of course, in that message, I said it indicative of October, which means they've got to know within mid-October, and that's it. Apparently, apparently what I've heard in Brisbane, and Raby spoke to me, Raby Cram spoke to me, said, we've already spent money on the shirts and everything. Really? Gee, so they they spent money or they spent money already. Believe me, they've done it already. So we just have to wait now for the next two weeks. Now, what I want to bring Tony in about this is right now, guys, and everybody should know this. Tony, I heard some rumours why Craig actually went to Saudi Arabia, mate. I've got the information here. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. This is a scoop, guys, a massive scoop. Right now, Tony's going to laugh. He's <laughs> guys, I tell you what, mate. Is it true, Tony? And Craig got two, five oil wells. Five oil wells as payment, mate. I prefer five oil wells than bloody the millions he's getting. I prefer the five. It would be a fortune, mate. You'd get cheap petrol in Australia too. How's that, mate? No, no oil wells, mate. Just camels. <laughs> oh, gee, camels, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, mate. Five five oil wells. You can you imagine what and five oil? Hey, go on. And a go. <laughs> oh, and mate, go. honestly. <laughs> and you're going over. You're going over. Is that right? You're going to see all this stuff too. You're going to have to put a turban on and everything. Is that right? Oh, boy. 
Uh, no, I'll, okay. I'll probably do the Asian Cup, but then I'll uh, probably go over and um, mm-hmm. stay with them for a couple of weeks just so I can go to a game over there. Hopefully they're playing like a uh, Ronaldo side or oh, my Neymar. <laughs> Something like that would be awesome. But mm-hmm. um, getting back to what uh, Angelo was saying yeah, there, yeah. the big thing is, is there a salary cap for the second division? No, I don't think there would be. I don't think because there would be. I wouldn't be surprised if they trial a no salary cap mm. to see how successful it is with the running of those sides to maybe then implement it for the A-League later. It would be interesting be, because it's just one thing we them. haven't heard about, but they've, they've never tried it with the A-League. They've always tried to keep it even. Even. Um, you know, obviously, yeah. Melbourne City would, would go bunter if it was allowed to spend what it could. But I know, I know. Um, but it'd be very interesting. If it turns out to be successful for a number of clubs in the second division, I could almost see it being implemented with the A League yeah, in the years yeah, to come. Exactly. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Go on. I'm going to go to the to the next to the next uh, debacle. I call this a debacle, everyone out there, because I tell you what. To, a tragedy. To, this is more than a tragedy. This is a Greek tragedy, my friend. This is an absolute Greek tragedy. I feel like Poseidon here. I feel like bloody Hercules here. Wanted to throw a, throw a, a bloody, a, 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 what do they call those things? A thunderbolt at someone to bloody give it to him. I'm telling you right now, I'm sick of this crap, this guy's. This is, we revisited the, the interstate games two weeks ago that nobody knows, Kenny. I can't believe this. And the game was won by Victoria. Uh, it was one all at the game, one all, at, and the game is actually up on um, YouTube. You can see the whole replay. Nobody knew about it. No advertising, no nothing. You should have seen it, mate. Of course, the Victorians are wearing the, see, Angelo, the Victorians are wearing the uh, navy blue outfits, the Queenslanders, the maroon outfits, like a state of origin, mate. What a joke. Honestly, guys, and guess where it was played? Guess where it was played? It was played at the home of the Matildas at La Trobe <coughs> University, gentlemen. And honestly, the game was, was a one all draw with Victoria winning 6-5 on penalty. I could not believe this. Kenny, you played it in some of those games yourself, honestly, not to have any advertising in Victoria or Queensland. I mean, and they're showing it on NPL TV. I mean, that's ridiculous, Kenny. Well, it must have been one of the last games on NPL TV before they went broke. Yes, yes, yes. May have been the reason they went broke, to be honest. Maybe it didn't make it. That was, a, that was one that broke the camel's, the camel's back. Is that yeah. right? That would have been it, I think. I mean, predominantly, you know, we never really had a state of origin oh, in geez. football. We we had, you know, um, state teams would play visiting either international teams or big club sides. I mean, I, I played against Hungary uh, in 1982 when they were on the way through to go to the World Cup. Vojvodina, 81, I played for New South Wales against Dinamo Zagreb. Um, mm-hmm. So that, they were well promoted in their days. Um, we've never really... Um, done a state of origin thing here which might be a you know look it's not my cup of tea because it, it's it's pandering to the the league the, the rugby league and the you know the the aussie rulesy type uh environments with because we're already doing it with grand finals which for me you know grand, if you won the grand final here everyone thinks oh that, that's the best team the best team is the team that was first past the post and that that's played all the games through the season and finishes top that's your best team you know um, we've got this thing about grand finals, you know, that if you win the grand final, you're the best team. Well, you know, we, we, we're sort of picking things up from other sports. For me, um, you know, maybe it would work, you know. Maybe it would work, you know, if, if they got behind it and and really threw some money at it and got some TV. Because it, the TV seems to love these state of origin things. Yeah, they do. Uh, you know, they seem to, you know, go crazy on them. So yeah, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a, uh, we could go. I mean, but we can do. We can go one better because we can go. We can go South Australia. Yes. You know, uh, uh, you know, Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales. Uh, uh, obviously, we could probably bring Perth in if we really wanted mm. to. We could, we could do it on a really big scale because okay. we, we're the only real national sport. That's right. And Kenny, did 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 you you played some of those games in? Was it the seventies? Was it the seventies or eighties? Yeah, now, 80s, yeah. did you play against all the all the states or some states? No, we never. We actually, I think we played Victoria once, but mostly it was against visiting oh, okay. uh, national teams or clubs. Predominantly, they they never they never really looked at doing Victoria New South Wales that often, or Queensland New South Wales. I think this is an NPL thing that they just slipped that mm-hmm. in uh, for for whatever reason. And they're going uh, to be doing this every year, actually, and I'm hoping that 
that New South Wales, South Australia, all the other states get involved in this because it's about time they and I tell you what they, they and, and Victoria and I tell you it was a close game, one all, and it was. But where they, where are they drawing the players from? Will it be from the new? Yeah, that was all, sack division. Or no, will it be this from the NPL? this is from all from the MPL players. The majority were actually uh, from three clubs: South Melbourne, Avondale. Uh, who was the other one? The uh, Oakley Cannons as well. So it was between the three three teams there, four teams maybe, but uh, and also Queensland from their own MPL, probably the highest teams as well. So that's the thing about that. Ended up to me, they're saying it was a success. What a success! And they played on a synthetic turf, which is absolutely ri- ridiculous. I mean, they couldn't what find we, a ground. What we need going back yeah. to, uh, to, to Tony, yeah. we want Craig to to do really well for three or four years over there. Come back and do a David Beckham. Come back and buy a buy a big club here. <laughs> and uh, do a David Beckham like at Miami. You know, they've they've, uh, they've just gone through the roof. And, we, and he can bring you know the Messi's and a few yeah, players here. I want to bring I want to bring Carlos. Carlos, but but you know yourself, you know, you're playing in the, in these uh, overaged uh, competitions. You're playing in these things. Are they states or uh, are they states? Aren't they? No. Well, no. When I go to the Masters games, yes. everyone goes to. Like the pan packs are well known in every second year in Gold Coast and the Australian yep, yep. Masters are in Adelaide in between. So you just go for a week and a bit, eight days, and play football or whatever sport. I think the interstate competition is a great concept. It will give an, an opportunity for players to show, you know, how good they are. I'm not sure with such congested football calendar, whether you will have the time to do it, you will have to do it at the end of the season. Mm. And with a lot of part-time players working full-time, it is extremely difficult for players at MPL level to take time off work to travel. I mean, it's great a great <coughs> concept, like having the Australian B team. Mm-hmm. When you have the B team, there was going to Asia to play international football, but the calendar has changed. Yep. We're, it's far more congested now, but if, when we had the B team, the head national coach could see a number of players in the B team, but that's going to have a window because with the football calendar is far more congested than ever before, mm, so I'm not exactly. sure if it's... But what, I, I suppose, my, my, yeah, I suppose my question is, if we're going to do it, then you pick the best players from New South Wales... Mm. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Victoria. They did, they did. I'm not talking about NPL, I'm talking about A League everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. The best, the the best, best players. It's a great concept to have an Australian national championship. Yes. But whether or not <coughs> there's enough financing, yep, the yep. players that you pick, can they take time off work and go and play for two weeks in a round rowing competition at yep, the yep. end of the season when you're fatigued? You're going to have it. To me, the Qatar World Cup was a success because the superstars were not fatigued. In July, they are mentally and physically <coughs> spent. And the message yeah, of yeah. it well shown in this world, last World Cup because <coughs> there were 15, 20 games into the season. Yes. So I, I like the concept. I think with a congested calendar and work issue, it might not, it might not be feasible. Yeah, exactly. Now, that's the thing is what I want to go is to the next inst- to, the, to the next level here of what we've got oh, here. It's a big right agenda here. today. Oh, I tell you what, you want to go, you want to know this one. Uh, apparently, the CEO of uh, Sydney FC has resigned, Mr. Adam Sato or Soto, whatever it is. And apparently, um, mm, it looks like some gentleman could be leaving uh, for, uh, of course, for Saudi Arabia. And we'll have to wait and see what happens in the next few weeks, guys. So, to think about that. So, that's something on the, a little bit of a scoop there that this guy could become the new CEO of the. Uh, a league, maybe we'll see what happens, guys. A bit of a scoop there for you, and of course tonight, of course the um, uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about is this um, um, Ange Postacoglu, guys. Uh, one more thing before we go tonight, Ange Postacoglu, Tony. Let's bring you on here right now. Let me tell you right now, mate. The rumours are out here, mate. The rumours are out. They want him at bloody. Uh, what do they say? Of course, they want Real Madrid, Napoli. Maybe, maybe, maybe we could uh, we could speak to Angelo about this. His hands going like this, you know. His hands waving like an Italian, you know. That's the thing, you know. I love. I tell you now, I, I would love to have Ange Postecoglou at Napoli, even yep, though Garcia yep. is doing yes, it. Yes, yes. Ange Postecoglou. Just remember, guys, that Tottenham and yep. uh, Kenny was something more like, uh, you know, they they weren't strong enough. Yeah, yeah. But 
let me tell you that Tottenham had not beaten Liverpool since 2017 there you go. when Pochettino was there. They, lost, they actually lost to Liverpool when Conte was there. They lost to Liverpool when Mourinho was there. Yep. And so the only to- that was six years ago. And I know I know it was a little bit lucky and own goal yep, yep. and that sort of thing, but you know, I watched the game and I thought Tottenham uh, played a, a fantastic game. Yep. And you know, some of those players that are that are playing a lot better than yes. they were under contact. Yes. And, I mean, I know that the new keepers Vicario, who comes from Empoli, Italy. Then they've also got Udigi, who's, who's Italian, who's Italian, he's playing in defence. Porro is improved. Um, you know, uh, I think I think the whole yeah, the whole team is playing a lot better, and they're playing percentage football. Like I saw, I saw the game was one one, and the way they were, you know, passing the ball, Kenny around the back line, just sharing the ball, waiting, waiting for Liverpool to come at them because Jeez. obviously two players had been sent off, and they yeah. were playing. Liverpool only had nine players with a goal. Yes, yes. So, and then they scored yep. that last goal, and as Ange Postecoglou, I, I heard the interview. He said we kept sort of putting the pressure on them until the last second, and of course the mistake, the mistake, and they won the game. They got three points. Unbelievable. But he is doing he is doing an extraordinary job, and we don't use this word very often. Extraordinary because Liverpool now are getting um, a Tottenham. Or Liverpool, or Klopp is complaining about. Uh, I saw it. I saw him complain. Unbelievable. Yeah. But Angelo, Angelo, Ange Postacoglu is doing such a great job, and the team <coughs> is getting more confidence with every game they play. Now, they had the big test with Arsenal, and they drew two all, and they could have won that game. Yep, yep. And in fact, Arsenal and Liv- and Tottenham are the only undefeated team. That's right. Jeez, Man's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let me get... I'm so, proud. I'm so, I'm so proud. Um, even though I'm living in Italy, I'm so proud to be Australian and, and to know that I'm, you know, a lot of my friends, Napoli fans and everybody's talking about Ange Postacoglu. Let me say something to Tony. You've got to bring Tony in for this one, mate. Tony, do you think that uh, Craig will actually meet um, Ange Postacoglu in... <laughs> In Saudi, you reckon they'll throw the they'll throw every suitcase they can at him, or what? No, nah, I think I oh, looked at that. That's Dream World stuff, mate. It's um, if it happens, they'd rather him to go to Palace. So, <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, it's so, uh, you got Carlos. Go on, Carlos. Go on, Carlos. Go on, Carlos. So, Man United. That's why we're in the shirt. Um, oh my God. Look, it's if you look at the even that son, the way he's playing. Mate. Um, Harry Kane, Harry Kane left, and you look oh, at the mate. what he's doing mate. in front of goals. I mean, that guy's just gone to another level. Um, but right. I don't know. Ange just seems it was given the belief. Um, they just absolutely really believe now, and um, just to hear those fans singing that song after he's walking around the game, you think, wow. I mean, and the, that must rub off on the players, and again, it rubs off on the fans from the players. Um, what he's doing over there is amazing. I so said, if, if they do knock off Man City when they play them. It's going to be dare to dream because, Mate. you know, it's been so many years since they've actually Mate. won something. Um, so if he if he brings it in his first year, I could see his price going through the roof for every other club in the world. And, of course, Kenny, we've got to speak to you. about The, the flavour of the month is the Australian coaches, mate. Now, yeah. we're talking about the butcher, the butcher of Melbourne, mate, the butcher of Melbourne. Of course, we're talking about Kevin Musket, mate, that big, that boxing match he had with Cozzy, of course. I put that up yep. a few weeks ago on this shirt. I've I, I got to keep repeating myself every time. Mate, look at Cozzy. Get up there and go for him and they stop the fight. I should have, they should have the bastards go and go. Oh, sorry for swearing. But, but uh, Kevin Musket at, 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 down at, uh, my God, mate, at Rangers? Kenny? Yeah, I don't think so, mate. I, look, you know, the media hypes. I mean, just go back quickly to the Liverpool uh, Tottenham game, you know, and I'm a huge Ange fan, um, but you know, the, the Liverpool goal was a goal. You know, the, the playing with nine men, you know, everything's falling in his lap at the moment, and it's going well, and it's brilliant, and I and I love it for him. But it, the media, if the media love you and get behind you, oh, it paints it paints a different picture. Yeah. Don't forget, Conte was in the top four right up until Jeez. probably February March of the season. Last year, but, but he wasn't playing what the, the Tottenham fans Offensive would say was football. attractive football. But he was in the top four. You know, you know what you just said. What you... The difference the difference for me, you, you mentioned the song, the lad from Leicester that, that he signed yes. is absolutely magnificent. He's, I mean, he's a Stonewall England player um, at the moment. I mean, he's just, I mean, nearly every, every goal that Song scored 
the tap ins unbelievable. Feed through him. Unbelievable. And if you watch him, him just picking the ball up deep, going in behind the fullback, cutting it across the box, and he gets in front of the defender. Um, he's he's a magnificent player. But I, I think that that's made such a difference. But um, I, I think, in fairness, I think Liverpool's got a, a lot to be angry about mm. at, at the game last week. That was that was absolutely outrageous. <laughs> You know, it was me, absolutely but, outrageous. Yeah, what about what about some what about Madison? I mean, you oh, played the game, right? Madison, yeah. my God! Yeah, you just mentioned, yeah, that's yeah, you just mentioned Madison, like the captain, Kulusevski, the yeah. way he was sort of like being so creative and no fear. Even when Liverpool was eleven against eleven, I thought Tottenham. Uh, see, through the eyes of it, everybody's different, you know. But the way yeah. I saw the game was, I, I thought Tottenham really took the game up to Liverpool and. You could see Klopp was under pressure. He was getting upset as well, you know, because, you know, like, uh, Kulisevsky comes from Juventus. I mean, he's had a couple yeah. of seasons there. So he's, he's no monk. Romero is playing better football. <coughs> Poro, Van de Ven, the whole defence is moving beautifully. And Son, Son, oh, the way man. he's playing with that central role, because he was always playing on the left of, um, um, you know, like uh, Harry, Harry Kane. Uh, I mean, he's doing so much damage, mate. and a lot of defenders can't hold him. You know, he's he's, uh, he's absolutely brilliant. He is re- yeah, he's not. reinventing players. He's reinventing them. That's the thing about oh, this. I think, look, I, I think I think what's happened is he's he, he's made a couple of really good signings. It's made a made a difference. Um, they're, they're obviously playing with a false nine at the moment. Song's playing with a false nine. Madison's coming from deep. Uh, Richardson is starting to play. A, a, a lot, a lot better. Not quite as good as he should be, but he's getting close to sort of World Cup form with, with Brazil. So he's got two or three players there that make the difference. Defensively, I, I, I still think they're they're they're, they're quite iffy. But uh, when I watch you know, the particular game we're talking about, if Liverpool scored the goal that should have been a goal, it's a different game. I mean, the red card was a red card. There's no yeah, doubt, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That was the red card. Yeah, but- Kenny, Kenny, let's talk about quickly the keepers, right? Vicario yeah. made a couple of good saves, but Allison, yeah. Allison, the Brazilian goalkeeper, the Liverpool goalkeeper, he made three yeah. magnificent saves. And I mean, Ange Postecoglou said it at the interview. He said, "Look, I was happy with the boys." He said, "You know, we could have actually, we could have actually closed the game a lot earlier if it wasn't for Allison." If you see the highlights, Allison made three spectacular saves. So I think, I think Tottenham. Uh, on the, look, it was a great game. It was in, a fairness, game. In, in fairness, eleven against nine, you know, and you scored in the last minute. You should be, you should be, you should be beating, you should be killing teams. <laughs> you know, Do you really? I mean, in fairness, to Liverpool held them out to the ninety-fourth minute. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it wasn't like they get a player sent off in Mate. ten minutes to go or whatever. One in the first half, and then early in the, the second half. So they played probably 35, 40 minutes with nine players. So. You know, and I'm not taking anything away from Tottenham because I've got three or four of my mates are mad Tottenham fans. Mad Tottenham fans. And they, and they say to me, oh, this could be our year, that could be our year. I mean, and look, I hope it is for... I'd love to see see something different happen. I'd love to see, yeah. rather than Man yeah. City dominate, I'd love to see Tottenham or Brighton yeah. or Liverpool or, yeah. you know, one of these teams to, to, to come up. And and this and knock knock them off because we need variety. We need change. Yes. Let me let me give you. I want to give Carlos a a, a scenario here. Let's 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 say oh. we're back. We're at the end of the season, right? The, the Premier League, right? This is going to be good. Ange Postecoglou needs three. He needs a draw or three points to to win the the championship. The, to to win the Premier League, right? Do you think that the Australians will absolutely get out there late at night? At Federation Square, will the cafes be open? Uh, Angelo, will the cafes be open everywhere at night time watching the last game of the season? Uh, Kenny, do you think that they're going to go into in Sydney, in South Australia? Of course, let's all go quickly around to everybody. Uh, Tony, they will go down, they will put the bloody big That's screen up at, at the Hanmar Stadium. Do you think it'd be like the World Cups revisited? Carlos, you first. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, Ange has, it's like the Matildas, they here and it's the nation. And he's opened the door for other Australian-born coaches to continue their development overseas. And Muscat and Chamblowski in Japan have doing well. So if that if that is the case, that is the last game of the season, and three points, and you win the pre, the Premier League, everyone will be glued to the TV sets. Angela, yourself, just quickly before we go. 
Yeah, just just quickly, I think I think it's going to have the same positive wave mm. as, as the Matildas. Um, is actually uh, been mentioned is on the lips of everybody, all the sporting BBC, all over the world, and uh, you know and they love him. They love him because he's so humble. I mean, after the game, he was so respectful, humble. They spoke about the VAR, what does he think, and all that sort of thing. Very, very sportive sort of thing. And let me tell you, they only need another 60 points, uh-huh. and they'll be in the Champions League. Okay. Now, Ke- now Kenny, yeah. you're, yourself and Kenny, you will go to the best cafes in the best. Will it be Will it be that one in uh, in Belmore? What's it called? The Corinthian? Will they open oh, up yeah. that night and then put the, sc- the screen up, and you'll be there with Ange Postacogli T-shirts and everything? Will you be there for that or what? Yeah, there'll be enough. There'll be enough for my my Tottenham mates. They'll they'll fill half a manly. Um, yeah, I, think, I, I don't think there'll be any any doubt about it. I think uh, you know if he uh, if he managed to be to be there at the end, it'll be a, a huge effort with the squad he's got. Uh, you you just keep your fingers crossed. There's any any injuries to to yeah. main two or three players, or then he'll be under he'll be under a bit of pressure because the squad's not that deep. But um, yeah, it'd be fantastic. It'd be great. And just you asked me about Musket. He won't get the Rangers job. You sure? I, I, okay. here, here, here's my big tip. Sam Allardyce. Aha, uh-huh. going to Japan. He's going to enjoy that, Big Sam. I'll tell you what, mate. The sushi. Sammy Rangers I'm talking about. Oh, okay. I thought he going to bloody... <laughs> no, no. Okay. No, I, 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 I got it wrong. See, Rangers won't take a chance on a... On a and because they've just done that with Beal. They, they'll want an experienced man to come in, to come in and coach. Sunis has been tipped to, to come back uh-huh. because he's left uh, uh, Sky Sports. So they've tipped him to come back in some capacity. Uh-huh. So okay. don't be surprised as soon as he's involved somewhere. But Big Sam would be uh would be a steadying influence that they need at the moment. I think. Now we have we have an announcement to make right now tonight. And Carlos, it, you guys don't know this. We yeah. me and me and Tony have been accredited by the A League guys by the A League the same as you, Carlos. So we're going to be doing uh, a yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be doing the football this show one of the A League games somewhere, guys. So watch this space. I know you're going to oh. hate us, but you know what's his space? And hopefully the second division. There you go. <coughs> Boys, everyone out there, we have been accredited because of our show and everything. They like it, so they put us on. and They're going to talk to us about something, and we'll see what happens from there. Tony, how do you feel about that? we got accreditation. Yeah, it'll be a good one. I'll, um, but it means I don't have to redeem a normal pass for the <laughs> W League now. and just go straight in with it. Yeah, so it's amazing, yeah. um, another credit to um, talking about Ange. I just think it'll be like Australia's Cup moment, mm. you know, if, if they were, like, playing a game to take out the league. Um, I think it would be a massive thing. I think people would get around it. But also credit to Mille Jadnak as well because he's his assistant. Mm. So that's another coach from amazing. Australia that's actually on the coaching panel. So, and and, and again, uh, Mille Palace, the captain as well. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'd like to see him do well. Um, but, yeah, it's it's massive. I just think it's massive with the game. It's going to put Australian – probably it may even help put well, more Australian players on the map. Okay. We just, just because they'll wonder who else we, is here. We just, got a, we just got an invite to one of the games just then right now. Sorry to tell you this, boys. This is breaking news. Somebody says, come to Perth for Perth Glory. Jesus, here we go. Perth right. Glory, mate. <laughs> Carlos, you coming or what? Well, can you tell um – can you tell Qantas and Virgin to lower the airfares? Yeah, that's it. That bloody, this country's going berserk, mate, with these uh, Qantas can still. Oh, and that last, honestly, Bonza, $50 for Bonza, Carlos. Bonza, 50 bucks, Mate, right, we want a sponsorship here, boys, for footballers. Bonza right. will sponsor footballers, I reckon. Yeah. You must be in the luggage bay. No, well, uh, they're going to put us to share one. They'll make us to put one. Oh, mate, it'll be terrible, isn't it? Guys, thank you for joining me. It's been a great show tonight, guys. Thank you for joining me. Uh, honestly, boys, Angela, fantastic having you from Italy. Of course, you you come there. Uh, you're that far away, a perspective of the European stuff and everything, which is fantastic. Carlos, always great to have the Lone Ranger. hi Silva, Silver, as he says. hi Silva. Silver. <laughs> is that right? And, of course, Tony from Adelaide, mate, the uh, churches, the churches of, uh, of course, the churches of the state of the churches. And, yes, Great Scott, it's Kenny Wilson. Always special having you on, Kenny. Thanks, guys, for having us tonight. See you guys very soon. Thank you, guys. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank See you. you Thank you. Thank you. See you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Next week on the show. Football is show very soon, guys. Don't forget that. We're on live again next week with a special as well for you. My. Oh, my God. Buster Copley, the best, the greatest coach in the world. Oh my God, let's see what happens, guys. Let's see. Next week, guys, football is live. Live next week, of course. Same time, same place, same bet station. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you, boys. Hey. Roger, the cup of life. This is the one.
Now is the time, don't never stop We shouldn't know, gotta be strong We shouldn't know, right from the top And when you feel the heat, the world is at your feet No one can hold you back if you really want it I see it in your eyes, you want the cup of life Now at the days, here you're gonna get it To your real chubby guys right now, everybody tell me, hey! Here we go, Aliyah, good night guys, see you next Monday night, we'll see where we've got some specials for you next week, good night guys, thank you everybody, thank you! Hi guys, Harry Sunday here, letting you know that there's a apparel company that supports the game that you love. It's called There Is Only One Football.com, guys. They've got all sorts of stuff from caps, t shirts, water bottles, all sorts of accessories, even for your mobile phone. All that sporting stuff you can wear anywhere you want to wear it, guys. That's right. And don't forget the website it's on There Is Only One Football.com. There is only one football!